everyone, welcome to video three in the series for back pain and rowing. Uh, so if you experience back pain or stuff down your leg, sciatica or anything like that, and you think that the rowing machine might be the cause, this video is gonna go over exercises for strengthening and stretching that you can do off of the rowing machine to one, help if you're having some symptoms, uh, two, help prevent symptoms, uh, and three, help with the motor, the movement patterns that we do when we're on the rowing machine that aren't necessarily natural for our bodies. Uh, there's some exercises we can do off the rower to help emphasize and kind of make our body really understand the movement to make it easier when we get on the rowing machine. Now, I'd recommend checking out video one and two, which they're also in the description below, uh, where I went over things to look for while you're on the rowing machine that might be causing some of the discomfort. Uh, and video two is going over uh, when you're on the rowing machine, some drills and things to pay attention to, to help stop or change the things that might be causing it from video one. So definitely check those out. But in terms of exercises and stretching, let's jump in. Okay, so first off, in video two, I actually forgot to mention something, so I wanted to throw it in at the beginning of this one. When you are on the rowing machine, uh, something else that can help alleviate some discomfort if you are leaning with your shoulders or pushing your, bat, your butt out and shooting the slide, um, or not really with the leaning forward, but that initial engaging that might happen, which usually ends up with us leading with the shoulders, uh, if that's happening, what I would recommend is actually messing with your damper setting or your resistance. Um, and depending on your rolling machine, those are different, uh, but try lowering it because if we make it a little bit easier for our body to connect and we don't have as much like oomph <clears throat> at the beginning of the stroke, then basically we're able to connect more through our legs and really push with our legs and kind of learn that movement pattern. And then we can start to increase that damper and the resistance and things like that again depending on your rowing machine. I do have a whole video on damper settings uh, and how it is or isn't resistance that you can check out uh, as well. Uh, okay, so now that that's out of the way, let's do the stuff off of the rowing machine. So the first exercise we're actually gonna do is about co-contraction, where we're getting our stomach muscles and our back muscles activated at the same time. And what you can do is, depending on your level of fitness and where you're at, we're just gonna do a plank. Now the big key here is, if you actually squeeze the butt, it'll stop you usually from pushing your butt up in the air. So if you squeeze your butt, it'll kind of get your butt down into your neutral position. If that's too difficult, you can go down onto your knees, uh, but find a plank level that is comfortable for you. You can also do this up on an elevated surface, uh, like your, the side of a couch or something like that. So planks are a great exercise that you can do. Shoot for getting up to a minute of it. Of it. So. Do 10 seconds, do 20 seconds, 30 seconds. Gradually work your way up so that you can actually feel like you're improving, but our goal is one minute solid, and if you're doing it in increments, just do a minute total. If you can do that multiple times and get it to three minutes, awesome, but start with a minute as your goal. Then, another exercise that you can do is called a bear crawl. Now, what you do for a bear crawl is it's really similar, except what you're gonna do is move an arm or a leg. So I'm gonna show it to you from the front and from the side. Starting from the side, your, shoulder, your hands are gonna be underneath your shoulders. Neck is in a neutral position. Knees are underneath your hips. Now what I'm gonna do is actually go up under my toes and lift my knees up into the air. So it's a small movement. You can see I'm not coming way up here. I'm just briefly coming up off the mat. Then what you can do when you're here is, one, you can just hold that and work your way up like you are in the plank situation, or you can turn it kind of into like a uh, bird dog that you do, except you're trying to not tilt your body in extreme amounts, and you lift one arm, lift the other. Other things you can do is lifting one leg, lifting the other leg. Um, our goal is to stay kind of as neutral as possible, but really just get the muscles working. Uh, for that, to be honest, try 10 arm lifts each side. Try 10 leg lifts. Then you can play with, let me lift this leg and this arm. Leg, and you can notice one side is harder for me than the other. And it doesn't need to be a drastic one. Uh, you're just trying to go in small increments. Then what you can do eventually is once you've got that down, now ideally you're actually doing the walking movement where it's a reciprocal, where if I'm lifting this arm and leg, you're walking like a bear. 
like that. Uh, so find a level of it that's comfortable for you, but that is a great one. See, even I'm struggling with it. Uh, that is a great exercise to kind of get the co-activation of the muscles working and really work your core and your back muscles. Great exercise for this. The way I recommend getting into this position is you're gonna come down like you're going to go into a push-up, bring your arms underneath you so that my elbows are kind of underneath my shoulders. And all I'm doing right now is kind of extending at my low back here. What you can do from here is take your arms and push up like this. And you might feel that working in your back. If this aggravates your back, please stop. Not a good exercise for you. Some people, if you are having symptoms, this actually alleviates the pain. Uh, so if that's the case, FYI, you can overdo this. Uh, so if you are somebody who's having back pain symptoms and you find that this is helpful for it, do about 10 to 20 per day. Do not do this in excess. It usually ends up backfiring on you. Uh, but you can essentially just start here, push up, and you can push up on your arms. And the advanced level is bringing your arms back so that they are underneath your shoulders, your hands. Pushing up like this. And you can even bring your toes up and lift your butt up in the air. Your goal is to really get some activation and getting some stretch uh, in the front muscles. So that's three exercises that you can do for your low back right there. Uh, there are uh, some stretches uh, that I'd also recommend doing. These stretches are great to do after rowing. Now, the biggest thing is research shows that when it comes to stretching, dynamic stretching or stretching where you're going like in and out of a movement, and I've got a whole video on, extra, on stretching routine you can do before working out. Uh, but research shows that that dynamic movement is better for pre-workouts. However, research is one component to evidence-based practice. Another component is how do people feel and do people feel better doing something? So, that being said, there are some people that if they do the static stretching, they feel better when they're doing the activity than they do when they don't do static stretching. So if you are a person who happens to like the, like maybe you've had a shoulder injury and you love to do this exercise here, I just evaled a pickleball player who this was exact, his exact story. He needed to do a certain stretch for his shoulder to feel like he could actually do the movements he needed with the racket. So if you're that type of person, feel free to give it a shot. I'm not gonna say don't do it, do what's comfortable. But otherwise, do it after rowing. So two that I really recommend doing. And it's important to note that if you are having symptoms down your leg, sciatic type things, if you're having numbness or tingling in your toes, your calf, your lower leg, your butt, anything like that, it's really important that this stretch be gentle. Now, it's very common for us to over aggravate a nerve. Uh, and if you go into a really intense stretch with these two, usually ends up backfiring on you. But our whole goal is to get the, the, the nerve and the muscles and everything moving. So go gentle. If you're not having any symptoms, feel free to go into a more intense stretch. Uh, completely up to you. Uh, so one of the ones that is really nice is laying on your back. And you can bring like a towel up or something like that, but grab behind your leg. The easier version of this is having this leg bent. Harder is going to have this leg straight. Uh, and then just go ahead and straighten your leg. And if you start to feel this in your calf, um, then it's important to kind of relax your toes instead of bringing them up towards you. Uh, but just relax and our goal is to feel a stretch in the back of the hamstring. Can you get your knee straight? Basically, work on your flexibility for your hamstring. You can also take this where you're grabbing something and bringing it behind you. Uh, and there are ways to do this stretch, sitting, standing, there's tons of them. Uh, I'm just on the mat, so I'm showing you this one. And then hold it for about 30 seconds and relax. If you feel your whole body tilting and everything like that, then usually you're past your stopping point. Uh, so try not to like let your whole body kind of tilt and rotate and things like that. You can do that on both sides. Then another one that you can do is, uh, for this one you're gonna want one knee bent, and then the other leg we're gonna take it and cross over like this, so it's kind of like a figure four. This is what that looks like from this angle, um, but you can see it's kind of like a, a four. <laughs> so once you're in this position, you can actually take your hand, grab your knee, and gently pull up towards your opposite shoulder. So you're pulling like across 
your body, essentially. You should feel this either in your leg here or in your butt. Some people like to do the piriformis stretch this way where they're pushing down on their knee. If you just feel this in your hip, stop, don't do that. Uh, but if you happen to feel a stretch with it this way, fantastic, go for it. I tend to prefer this one, but do whatever works for you. Goal restriction, what research shows is we're trying to get up to two minutes. Um, now, when it comes to those, hold it for 30 seconds, hold it for a minute. Do that, if you're doing 30 seconds, do it four times. If you're doing it for a minute, do it twice. If it's tiring on your arms and your head, remember to relax your arms and your head, but don't injure something else trying to help your legs. So when it comes to standing exercises, uh, what I would recommend is one that really helps with the hip hinge movement, which tends to cause a lot of the discomfort in backs on the rolling machine is not having this movement down. And the reason is, is we just don't do this movement a lot when we're naturally going in our daily lives. So it's a little bit of a weird movement and does kind of take a little bit of training to kind of understand it. So I'm gonna show it to you briefly, but I'm gonna do a whole video just on that, so stay tuned for that. All right, and in this video, you can see my trailers right there, uh, but what we're gonna do is a Romanian deadlift. So for this deadlift, what we're trying to do is if I just put a slight bend in my knee and I just bend forward at the hip, I'm not changing anything else at my knee, not changing anything else anywhere except at my hip. And if you watched video two, I kind of talk about that with a reverse pick drill. So for this, you can actually do a regular Romanian deadlift where you're doing this exact thing, holding on to weight. Uh, another thing that you do is this on a single leg version. Now there are ways to kind of, if you're struggling for getting this with balance or things like that, and that's why I'm gonna do a whole video on it. Uh, but essentially what you're doing is you're standing on one leg and you have a slight bend in your knee and then you bend forward and back up. Now you're going to, you essentially feel a stretch or tightness in the hamstring and then back up. Now, as you do this, some people tend to rotate or things like that, we're not looking for that. We are just trying to get this movement that is on the rower into a strength training and motor uh, training uh, type of thing. So we're just trying to do some neuromuscular training on the muscles. All right, so for this next one, you're gonna need some type of weight. Kettlebell, dumbbell, uh, bag of groceries, backpack with things in it, totally up to you. What you can do is put that weight in your hands. I want you to bring your shoulders, like you're pinching your shoulder blade back and down so that we're not just letting our arm hang to the side. We are engaging our shoulder muscles and basically it brings the weight really close to your body as well. This is gonna work your, work your grip strength as well, but you just start walking. Now the goal is try not to be like this, uh, try to stay upright and then you can switch arms if you want and turn around. Uh, but this is a great thing for uh, our core and uh, in the front and the back, very beneficial exercise. Okay, so those are the exercises for back pain that I recommend doing off of the rowing machine if you're having some discomfort that will hopefully help you on the rowing machine. As always, if you've got questions, please drop them below. I'd love to jump on and make a video for you helping you out. If you found this helpful, please hit that thumbs up. Helps my small channel get seen a little bit more uh, because I just want to help more people and get more people rowing without being hurt.